How's it going guys? Welcome back to my channel and time for another combo review. It's been a while, but you know, I, I came across two films very recently and they're quite the pair. They're, they're quite a good match for each other, so I thought I'd kind of merge them together in the combo review. One is a sequel to a beloved Disney tale that has been an astonishing 15 years in the making, and the other is a brand spanking new seasonal musical featuring two of the biggest comedic talents working on the planet right now. But first up, we are reunited with Giselle, Robert, Morgan, and a whole bunch of other enchanted folk in the sequel, Disenchanted. I know the change can be scary, but it can also be exciting. If I learned anything from meeting a princess on a billboard is that sometimes you just have to take a leap. Let's start our new life. The last we saw of Giselle, she had finally found her happily ever after with Robert and his daughter Morgan, not in Andalasia, but in New York City. With over a decade having passed and Giselle's family getting bigger with the arrival of baby Sophia, her and Robert make the decision to move away from the city and to a smaller town in the suburbs. However, this move causes friction between Giselle and a now teenage Morgan. So when Giselle comes into the possession of a wishing wand and wishes for her life to be like a fairy tale, it spells disaster for the future of her family and for Andalasia. The first Enchanted was like lightning in a bottle. It was as if the stars themselves aligned and had crafted a brilliant blend of Disney magic with a wink and a nod to how silly fairy tales can be. It also catapulted Amy Adams into stardom with a role that has stood the test of time among many Disney fans. As for myself, I've always liked Enchanted. I haven't necessarily been swinging on a chandelier proclaiming that it's Disney's magnum opus, but it's sweet. And I enjoyed how it poked holes in both the, the, the formula that is a fairy tale and how chaotic that would be if it merged with the harsh reality of New York City. That dichotomy was what made Enchanted work. Which is why I'm disappointed to say that Disenchanted doesn't quite have the same creative spark that the first was so blazingly embracing. The story this time around is much more formulaic, focusing on Giselle struggling to reconnect with Morgan. And in that angle, the film discovers there's a possible stepmother arc here, and it pulls on that thread and it pulls and it pulls and it pulls until the fabric of the first film comes completely undone and you're left with a sequel that doesn't feel anywhere near as enchanting as Enchanted does. But here is the good. The cast are all game. Amy Adams slips back into this role with ease and is also able to play around even more given the twists surrounding her character. Patrick Dempsey is probably picking up a sweet, sweet paycheck, and you know what? Good for him. Maya Rudolph is having fun camping it up as the film's villain, and then there's James Marsden, who continues to give everything he's got in this role, which is so impressive, but it's also really disappointing because he has such a small amount of screen time in this film. Someone who does very well indeed is Gabriella Baldacino, who takes over on the role of Morgan, and she does such a good job that I didn't initially realise that it wasn't the same actress from the first film. Disenchanted is also a full-blown musical with a heck of a lot more songs than the first. Now, unfortunately, these songs are nowhere near as catchy as ones featured in the first film, and the story itself, it lacks distinct imagination. As I said, the fun of the first film was seeing fantasy and reality clash. Here predominantly it's just fantasy and the disappointing thing is is that it's playing that fantasy very straight laced. What struck me the most when watching Disenchanted is that despite having a decade and a half to come up with an original idea to pair with the first, they wound up stuck in a formulaic ditch. The creativity isn't on display as much as we know it can be and despite the cast giving it their all and there still being enough magic and whimsy for the runtime to tick along, by the time Disenchanted comes to a close, it was like I had watched a forgettable direct DVD sequel that Disney felt like they were obliged to make. So I'm gonna give Disenchanted a 5.5 out of 10. 
And now shifting gears from Disney Plus to Apple TV Plus, but staying firmly in that musical lane, comes a new festive special from the minds behind Daddy's Home and Instant Family, as well as starring two Hollywood Goliaths, Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell. It's Spirited. What is all of this? I am your ghost of Christmas present. Like a Christmas carol? Christmas. What do you, do you think I'm gonna be all intrigued by what's behind the door? I not even a little bit curious? Damn it! We all know the story of A Christmas Carol, or do we? What if the concept of finding someone bad and taking them on a whirlwind trip through their past, present and future was an annual tradition orchestrated by a ghostly organisation? Well, that is exactly the case with Spirited. Will Ferrell stars as the ghost of Christmas present and is determined to end his tenure in the position by redeeming someone considered to be unredeemable. Cue Ryan Reynolds as a sleazy businessman looking to get as many wins as he can no matter how many people he has to screw over. But when he is approached by his spirits three, their task soon gets flipped on its head when he refuses to play ball. I love a good musical as much as the next person and I love Christmas as much as the next person but when it comes to musical christmas films i haven't really been a big fan and despite having bundles of charm and festive spirit i can't say that spirited has necessarily won me over in this instance directed by sean anders who has helmed some pretty decent family comedies like daddy's home and the underrated instant family there is absolutely no denying that both he and apple have left nothing on the conceptual table and have completely gone for broke in delivering a musical extravaganza. Now their first big win was getting Pasek and Paul, the songwriters behind films like The Greatest Showman and La La Land, on board to write the songs for this film. Thankfully the songs are very catchy, they're really good. Um, if I have any nitpicks about them, I think the film itself was missing just that one big anthem one big song that completely dominates the conversation when you talk about this film there wasn't that and i don't think any of these songs whilst they are enjoyable are going to be all that memorable but nevertheless it's really quite fun to see these actors fully commit themselves to this musical and what's great is that this is full of actors who you don't necessarily see in films like this they are for lack of a better term out of their comfort zone and they all really give it their rule there are some instances where some actors do better than others ryan reynolds for instance i think you could tell that this is a little bit out of his wheelhouse but will ferrell goes for broke and i think in this instance it really is better to just completely throw yourself in as for the story that's where spirited falters a little bit it builds itself as a modern retelling of A Christmas Carol, and for the most part, it is. But there is more to it than just showing Ryan Reynolds' character the error of his ways. And unfortunately, it all gets too convoluted for its own good. There are quite a few plot threads jostling around for screen time, and by the end, it can't help but feel a little messy. Charming, undeniably charming, but messy. So, Spirited wasn't quite the home run I was hoping for. It hums a good tune and it sings a good song, but unfortunately, it doesn't tell that great of a story. It overcomplicated a tried and tested formula with two lead characters who, instead of sharing the story, felt more like they were in an involuntary tug of war to see who the film was actually about. But putting my Grinch cap to one side, yes, it is hard not to be charmed. The singing, the dancing, it's all bright and cheerful, and to kill a couple hours on a drab November evening, there are plenty of worse options out there. So I'm going to give Spirited a 6 out of 10. Anyway guys, those were my thoughts on Disenchanted and Spirited. Let me know, have you had a chance to see any of these films yet? What did you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. But that is all we have time for here today, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Hello, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to click that like button. And if you aren't already, click that subscribe button too.